After the release of Android 13 Stable, discussions of downgrading back to Android 12 began to surface. And while it is true that downgrading the Pixel 6 series is not recommended due to a critical security flaw, you can downgrade the other Pixel devices without any issue. Now downgrading back to a previous version of Android isn't something that I usually recommend, but I do know there are times when it is needed. If you're having an issue with the new Android 13 update, I would first recommend that you perform a full factory data reset to squash any potential bugs you may be experiencing before you choose to go through the downgrade path. However, if you are adamant about downgrading to Android 12, know that as of recording this video, you are able to downgrade the Pixel 4, Pixel 4 XL, the Pixel 4a, Pixel 5, and Pixel 5a devices. And you can technically still downgrade the Pixel 6 series, but using the Google firmware to do this results in lots of system crashes. You will also need to have the bootloader unlocked and USB debugging mode enabled before you begin the downgrade process. If you are not familiar with how either of these things are done, be sure to check the video description below as I'll have links to dedicated video tutorials that will show you exactly how that is done. You can see I have the Android 13 stable build installed on this Google Pixel 4a. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to downgrade it back to Android 12. So when you're ready, we just need to connect your Google Pixel device to the PC with a USB cable. And then we're going to visit the Google Factory Images website. So here on the desktop, we have the Google Factory Images page, and I'll be including this link in the video description as well. You're going to want to find your device in this list. So in my case, that is the Google Pixel 4a. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of this section to find the latest version of Android 12 before the Android 13 update. So as of right now, the latest firmware available is Android 13. So we're going to go one right above it, which is 12.1.0 on the July update. So from here, we're going to click the flash link. And now we're going to grant access to our ADB keys on our device that has USB debugging mode enabled. So we're going to click allow. And then we're going to select the device here, which is the Google Pixel 4a. If you see an already in use option, then we can go and kill the ADB service in a command prompt and then do a force inspect. We're going to allow USB debugging access on our device when prompted or if prompted so that we can get this connected message on the screen here. So in the Android flash tool, we have our device that has been selected and is connected. We have the firmware that we selected in the previous page and our correct target. Now we can choose some additional options here like locking the bootloader or force flashing all partitions. This is something that I generally recommend if you're going to do a full firmware flash with Android Flash Tool. And we're going to do that in this video to downgrade back to Android 12. So when you're ready, we're going to go ahead and click on the blue install build button at the bottom. And here we get to confirm all of our 
actions here. Again, we have the selected device, the Pixel 4a in this case, and the Android 12 firmware right here. So again, we're going to confirm and accept. Now we have some instructions here telling us to not interact with the device unless instructed to do so by this page. And we should also not unplug our device. So we have our Google Pixel 4a. It is connected to our PC with a USB cable. And now we're going to let that phone, we're going to leave that phone alone. Do not mess with the connection. It needs a stable connection to complete this flashing process. And we're going to let the Android flash tool do its job. During this time, you will see your Google Pixel smartphone reboot a few times. For instance, before this download software bit happened, our Pixel 4a rebooted into fast boot mode. That's normal. Again, we're not going to touch the phone. We're not going to touch the USB cable. You can see it's rebooting into bootloader again so that it can flash additional files. You can see now it's booting into user space fastboot, which if you look at your device will be showing up as fastboot D. And again, we're still not touching the phone. We're still not messing with the USB cable. If you are following along with me in the video, some of these steps may take longer or shorter for you than me. And that largely depends on how fast your internet connection is, how fast your computer is. Because we're using Chrome or we're using our web browser to do a lot of work in preparing these images, flashing these images, and also downloading these images.
even if the screen on your device just turns completely black, as long as you're seeing progress in the progress bar right here on the screen, then it's safe to know that work is still being done. The Android Flash tool is still working to upload and flash image files. And you're still not going to want to touch the screen, press any buttons, or mess with the USB cable. And if all things go well, you're going to see a green install complete message right here with the Google Pixel phone rebooting on its own. Once that appears, you are safe to unplug the USB cable. And we just wait for the phone to boot back up and take us to the Android activation screen. So I'm going to skip through most of this real quick and get us to the home screen. And as we have finished booting back up, we can dive into the settings and the about section to see that we are indeed back on Android 12. As you can see, we have successfully downgraded the Google Pixel 4a from the stable version of Android 13 down to the latest version of Android 12 or Android 12.1, depending on what you want to call it. If you choose to stay on this version of Android, be sure that you prevent over the air updates from being installed in the background, but know that you are going to miss out on monthly security updates by staying on this older version of Android. Again, it is generally not recommended that you prevent the device from updating to its latest version. But again, I do understand that there are reasons behind wanting to do so.